firefighters here on the scene. <laughs> everybody and thank you so much for being here appreciate well, let me start by the way by first saying to all the folks that have been working around the clock men and women of the different departments the volunteers our city departments and we're here to share the latest information on the brush fire in the Pacific Palisades let me start by acknowledging Los Angeles City Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas and our incredible Los Angeles City Fire Department together with our county colleagues uh, the Los Angeles County Fire Department uh, that together with others who we will name um, have been out there while Angelino sleep, while uh, folks have been going on with their lives, they've been around the clock protecting our homes, our families, our property, and ultimately our lives. We're so fortunate to have those heroes on the front line. Thank you. And we appreciate the partner agencies as well. Give them some applause. We've got Los Angeles County Fire, we've got Cal Fire here as well. Uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff and LAPD assisting as well. Thank you as well to each and every one of them as well. We'll have some numbers probably to update later in the day. Uh, still we're holding at 1,325 acres is the official number, but the fire has grown some. And we'll get those numbers as soon as we're able to calculate them a little later this morning. While, as I've said many times in these press conferences, it's 0% containment, that doesn't mean 100% out of control. Uh, we're holding lines, and I'll go a little bit more detail. There's no injuries reported, no structures under threat at this time. Evacuation orders, of course, have been given in the, on the county side. We'll get to that in a minute. But no evacuation orders have been issued in the city of Los Angeles, though uh, Councilman Bond will speak a little bit to the preparedness of that and being ready to go if necessary. Um, let me walk through a few things that have happened uh, since yesterday. Obviously, yesterday we had an inversion layer. Uh, the weather is our friend. Um, but it's also um, our challenge. It's our friend because it caps the fire and the heat. Um, as soon as it lifts, um, it is something that is a big danger. Um, usually traditionally around 2 p.m. or so, a fire will see that lift, and that's really when a fire takes off. That's what happened a couple days ago, uh, excuse me, yesterday. But uh, we have also uh, the advantage of it uh, holding that fire down. The problem and the challenge of it is when that uh, over uh, that inversion layer is here, it's very difficult for us to do the sort of airdrops that we'd like to get in there to be more aggressive on this fire. This is very challenging terrain. As you've heard, this is about 75 years since we've had a fire there. Some of the brush is 20 to 30 feet high. So we've got three divisions. It's a two-division fire, but three divisions that are here. Uh, Alpha and Mike are on the west side. 
uh, on the county border. Um, we've got a Zulu Division Z on the uh, east flank. I'll uh, update you a little bit. Right now on the west flank, the Topanga Fire Road is holding. Um, Topanga Canyon, obviously, we have the county evacuations that affected the Topanga Oaks, uh, Sylvia Park, Topanga areas. Uh, areas. On the um, east side of this, um, we're on Trailer Canyon, Temesco Canyon Fire Road, and that's where we saw some activity approaching that area, but we feel good. We have both Type 3 and Type 1 crews out there. Um, a push from last night that we saw some eastward growth. Again, we'll have to calculate how much additional acreage. Um, and twice yesterday, we were it was unsuccessful for us to be able to bring in planes to put retar retardant down on some of the ridges there on the east side to make sure it's contained, but uh, no imminent danger right now. Our goal today are to continue to do two things. One is we feel good in the northwest of this fire and the far southwest, but in the kind of west-southwest towards Topanga Canyon um, is to make sure that we can build that line and hold that line. Uh, again. Don't want anybody to feel like there's imminent danger there, but we want to get that, get that done, hopefully before the cloud uh, uh, cover lifts today. And on the east, we're working the three R's, the, the roads, the ridges, um, and the rivers. We're working boxing that in where we are. Keep it from getting down whenever it comes to the river edge uh, in the bottom of those canyons. It fights its way back up. So we uh, do have um, air. Uh, support at Santa Monica Airport ready to be able to drop and to hold those lines as well and uh, we will deploy that as soon as weather permits hopefully today. Uh, lastly we've got 540 uh, personnel on this, 72 different fire resources, 540 across the multiple agencies that are here so we're putting everything that we can on this as well. Uh, with that, let me turn it over to our fire chief. Happy to come back and answer questions. Um, one last thing I'll say that I'm sure is of interest as well uh, about the person of interest, a suspect now who has been arrested, uh, but is getting medical treatment right now. So that, that person uh, is in custody, but we're not releasing anything more about that yet uh, as that is a pending investigation uh, that the arson division of our LAFD is the lead on with assistance from our LAPD, of course. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, uh, the finest fire chief I've ever worked with and the man who leads this incredibly brave department. Please welcome our Los Angeles City Fire Chief, Ralph Torreses. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everybody. Let me start off with the positive news. No lives have been lost. No homes have been lost. We've only had one minor firefighter injury, a minor injury to his eye. I'll start off with a little history. Uh, Friday, this past Friday at 10 p.m., uh, we had uh, a response by the Los Angeles City Fire Department to a reported brush fire in the 1800 block of North Michael Lane in Pacific Palisades. The fire was located back in the canyon with steep, difficult to navigate terrain. An air battle ensued throughout the night and continues today using water dropping helicopter from the LA City Fire Department and LA County Fire Department while our firefighters work to make access by the ground. By 6.30 a.m. on Saturday, May 15th, the fire was estimated at 15 acres. Unfortunately, by 4.30 p.m., an additional burn area emerged north of the original fire. At this, at this time, within about one hour, the fire grew to 750 acres. By 1 p.m. yesterday, Sunday, May 16th, the fire was estimated at 1,325 acres with 0% containment. We do anticipate being on scene for the next several days until we achieve 100% containment, and we do expect updated containment numbers this afternoon. I want to thank all our Unified Command partners, the LA County Fire Department, Cal Fire, LAPD, LA County Sheriff's Department, as well as our assisting Area A fire departments from Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, and Culver City, as well as our regional partners, the Orange County Fire Authority, Ventura County Fire Department, and MRCA personnel. It truly takes all public safety agencies working together, law and fire, to deal with these large scale brush fires. I do want to remind the public of four main things. Number one, Make sure you clear your brush a minimum of 200 feet from the brush to your structure. 
We have about 140,000 brush parcels in the city of Los Angeles. As I speak today, we're at 60% compliance, and we have until June 30th to reach 100% compliance, which we normally do. But I think this fire tells us it doesn't hurt to comply earlier than usual. Number two, please sign up for alerts by going to notifyla.org, and you can get our LAFD alerts by signing up at lafd.org. So those are your two best sources of information, LAFD.org, as well as the alerts at NotifyLA.org. We did issue a wireless emergency alert um, notification Saturday when we had the, actually it was yesterday, when we had the evacuation warning. We call that the WIA. And only those people within that circle that were affected get that message from us. So we practice that on a regular basis. We work with our emergency management department and our firefighting personnel at our dispatch center are trained and capable to do that, and they did that yesterday. Tip number three, prepare your family to ready, set, go. And you can learn more about that at LAFD.org. That applies to anybody who may be affected by a possible uh, brush fire evacuation. All the details, everything you need to know is at LAFD.org. And tip number four, no hikers. Please no hikers while we're fighting fires. When we have hikers in the vicinity, we do have to uh, reallocate resources away from the fire. And that hurts our uh, chances to put this fire out quicker. So please, no hikers. Lastly, regarding the cause, it is labeled suspicious. The LAFD Arson Counterterrorism Section, along with LAPD, have aggressively pursued all tips and all leads. I want to have a special thank you to the community that provided us those tips and leads. We have to work together as a community. This problem is so significant in terms of major brush fires. We live in Southern California. We count on those tips coming in, and then we vet the tips, and we pursue investigations. And I'm happy to say that we did detain one person and release them and determined that the first person was not a suspect. The second person was arrested uh, yesterday at 2.30 p.m. and is in custody. It is an active investigation. I cannot give you any more details than that, but the uh, person in custody, uh, we feel we have the right person. One additional piece about our air tankers, I just, as I was walking over here, I was told that our air tankers cannot get airborne unless we have uh, the cloud cover lifts to 4,000 feet. Right now it's at 2,500 feet. They're at Fox Field. If, if we get the cloud cover to lift, they'll be here in 20 minutes. We're monitoring that cloud cover um, continually. As soon as we get to 4,000, you'll see some air tankers up in the sky. And with that, I'll turn it over to Council Member Mike Bonnet. Mike? Thank you, Chief. Uh, and uh, thank you to the uh, men and women of our firefighters for the Los Angeles Fire Department, those who are here today who are fighting this fire from Los Angeles County, from Orange County, and from Ventura County. Uh, this has been a remarkable unified command of people who are putting their lives on the line to protect lives and property here in these communities. We have had over the past several years a number of major fires here in the Santa Monica Canyons and the hillsides of this district. Each fire has been different, each fire has presented unique circumstances, and each time we have seen the men and the women, the front line and the command of LAFD and sister agencies take to that task with bravery and with steely determination and with remarkable professionalism. And they have responded to each situation and done an incredible job saving lives. A word today to, to those who live in the areas near this fire. 
There have been mandatory evacuations in areas of Los Angeles County. In the city of Los Angeles, there are areas that are under voluntary evacuation. There are other areas, if the fire moves in certain ways, that could be later subject to voluntary evacuations. I want to reiterate what the chief said and ask everybody in those areas, in Palisades, in Brentwood, and other areas that are fire prone, to please sign up at notifyla.org. You will get a text alert faster than any other notification. I got a notification about the, the evacuation warning yesterday afternoon immediately. For tips on how to be prepared, in addition to the resources the chief provided, there is a detailed explanation of how to be ready, how to be set, and when to go at readyforwildfire.org, which is maintained by CAL FIRE. It has specific directions on what to include in a go bag. When you get the warning, please be prepared. Please get set. That is the time to make sure your go bag is in your car, to make sure you know who is responsible for your pets, and to make sure that you have plans with your family members on where to meet and how to be in touch with each other. Also very important because we faced this situation in previous fires, when you leave, if you evacuate, please have with you a card and information about anybody who routinely comes to your home so that you can notify them that you have evacuated and they should not enter. That may be a housekeeper, that may be a kid's tutor, that may be a gardener. Make sure that anyone who may come to your home has been notified. Pack your bag, and if you are concerned about the potential, pack your bag, put it in your car, have your car facing out of the driveway, and be ready to go. A final word about cooperation with uh, law enforcement and with our fire department personnel. We have been very fortunate that we have received tips that have helped with the investigation. We are looking at a very long and a very difficult fire season. We have installed over the past year throughout the Santa, uh, Smith, Santa Monica Mountains wildfire, wildfire alert cameras, which help LAFD and sister agencies have a bird's eye view of what might be happening. But there is no substitute for eyes on. If you see a fire, if you see something suspicious, make sure to alert LAFD, make sure to alert LAPD. Uh, please do not start going and, and, and putting stuff out on social media apps indicating uh, who suspects are. LAPD, LAFD are the appropriate authorities uh, to investigate and to handle the investigations. So again, thank you to the firefighters. Much appreciated for all of your incredible work. I'd like to introduce Los Angeles County, and this is very important information. I, look, I, I'm a big fan of the First Amendment. I've, I've received things on both ends. Let's make sure this information gets out at this moment uh, as much as possible, because some of this will be life-saving information. So thank you very much, Council Member Bond, and especially for the way you're protecting. Respect that, please, if I could respectfully just ask for a moment. Um, getting that information out to folks, especially those who are close to and hearing evacuation orders, for some that triggers them, I've got to get out of here right now. We want to reiterate on the LA City side, as Councilman Bonin said, his staff and other city agencies are working. There's nothing imminent on the LA City side. If that changes, you will be the first to know. And signing up, as he said, for those alerts is the quickest way to find that out, um, as well as through the media. And we thank the media for being here today. Finally, we couldn't do this without our Los Angeles County Fire Department. And our Assistant Chief Jesse Vela is here. I want to thank him for his great men and women, some of who we see that are here with us today uh, between shifts who are also helping protect. I'll come back, say something in Spanish, and then we'll take questions. Good morning. On behalf of Fire Chief Darrell Osby, I would like to begin by thanking the assistant agencies who have been working with us throughout the incident. We could have done it um, and succeeded how we have without uh, CAL FIRE, Los Angeles Fire Department, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, California Highway Patrol, the Los Angeles Police Department, and most importantly, all the many regional fire services agencies who have lent their support and resources. Uh, as it's been stated, we are now on the fourth day of the Palisades Fire, uh, which has burned 1,325 acres and at 0% containment. 
evacuation orders have impacted hundreds of Topanga residents in over 500 homes that, that still face potential threat. Uh, repopulating these residents is one of our top priorities. However, we need to ensure that it is safe to do so. Uh, thankfully, we have had no structures destroyed or damaged, and, the re and no residents reported any injuries. We did have, as it was mentioned, one firefighter injured last night on the line, but fortunately it was minor in nature. Uh, thank you to Topanga for your patience, your understanding and support as we work through this together. Uh, as it's been mentioned, we are, we are facing a fire and steep rugged terrain that is difficult to access. Further, much of the ve vegetation in these canyons has not seen any fire activity in over 50 to 60 years in some of the areas. The weather has had a significant impact in our ability to fly fixed wing and aircraft. However, our helicopters have been operating 24-7 since the beginning of the fire, making hundred, hundreds of water drops. I would like to thank our ground and our air crews for their tremendous work that they have done to date, as well as their families to support them while they're working here today. The fire remains active, but I assure you we will continue to coordinate and devote a vast number of air and ground resources to protect the lives and the property of our residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. En español también le quiero decir unas palabras. Muy buenos días y gracias a todos por estar aquí este día. Primero quiero reconocer al jefe de bomberos de la ciudad de Los Ángeles, Raptor Razas, nuestro increíble departamento de bomberos y nuestras parejas en los otros departamentos del condado uh, y otras agencias durante este momento. Uh, somos tan afortunados a tener estos grandes héroes luchando por nosotros. Much muchas gracias a ustedes por su trabajo. Aquí tiene la última información sobre el incendio de maleza en Pacific Palisades, el cual comenzó a la última hora de uh, la noche del viernes. Uh, tenemos 1,325 acres se han quemado, pero probablemente un poco más uh, hasta ayer, uh, con 0 por, uh, por ciento de contenimiento, pero hay control en muchas partes de este incendio. No se han notificado uh, lesionados, no hay ninguna estructuras en amenaza al momento y no se han emitido órdenes de evacuación en la ciudad de Los Ángeles, pero hay órdenes en la, el condado de Los Ángeles. Afortunadamente hemos tenido un clima fresco y uh, yo vinza uh, uh, este fin de semana, yo visna, uh, perdón, este fin de semana, alto humedad y poco viento. Este incendio está en una zona altamente inaccesible, por lo que ha sido en gran parte una operación uh, aérea, con aviones y helicópteros arrojando agua sobre el incendio. Los incendios suelen uh, cambiar rápidamente. Puede encontrar información más actualizada en lafd.org diagonal news. Y el Departamento de Bomberos espera seguir luchando contra este fuego por unos días más. Y nosotros continuaremos proporcionando actualizaciones. Y finalmente tenemos un sospechoso. El sospechoso uh, ha sido arrestado. Uh, y uh, esta investigación es en el control del uh, Departamento de los Bomberos con asistencia del Departamento de Policía también. With that, and one thing I said in Spanish, I didn't say in English, we're, we are expecting that we'll be fighting this for at least a couple more days, uh, two or three more days. I don't know. Questions? Yes. The person is he is getting medical treatment right now for a uh, it's not a mental health uh, treatment it's other than that. Um, it's um it's I'd say minor. It, it, it's probably out there. It's smoke inhalation. He's being tra treated for that. It's a male smoke inhalation. He's at the hospital right now. Uh, I don't want to speak to that right now. There's homeless encampments in many uh, brush areas of the city. Uh, that's 
we have well, we what activated our brush and camp and windshield survey program right after the Skirball fire. And we'll continue, we'll continue to do that throughout the year, and we'll continue to do that starting next week. It's earlier than we normally do, but we normally don't have this type of fire, the size of fire, in May. I think we really have to think about brush fires as a year-round challenge. And uh, yesterday, when I woke up, it was raining. And it was raining out here. And the fire is still burning. And that is unusual fire behavior. Our relative humidity was almost 60%. Our wind speed was below 10 miles per hour, but we still had active fire. That tells you that the drought, that the years of, of uh, that have gone by before the since the last fire, sometimes as long as 75 years, have changed the equation. And we have to all work together. That's why we count on the community to provide us information, tips, and law enforcement so we can rapidly apprehend anybody who may be starting these types of fires. I don't have any knowledge of any specific in that area. I'll just say that they are throughout the city and we, we're, it's always a challenge for us to identify those encampments. There was a brush fire along Almedio. No, you know, actually, we do very well. We have 100% of the government properties have been cleared already. 60% of the private properties have been cleared. We historically and traditionally reach about 100% compliance with our private properties. I'm asking that people actually try to do it a little bit sooner this year. Instead of June 30th, that's the mandatory deadline. If we can do it sooner, that there would be helpful. There was a brush fire along Albedio on Monday, which is near Temesco, and a second one on Tuesday that's 69 foot out. A homeless man was found by it. The suspect that you have, did he also set the Almedio fires, or is that someone else? I have no information to your question. I'm sorry, I don't know that. Regarding the witnesses who spoke up, you got tips from the community. Can you elaborate what they were able to provide? It was information that whoever they saw may have been setting multiple fires, not just one. I don't have information specific to that. I'll say that there was uh, one piece of information that was floated out on social media, the first person, and uh, that person turned out not to be a suspect. But that's going to happen. We're asking for a partnership with our communities. And we, we rely on them to not jump to conclusions, but if you see something suspicious, we want to know about it. Call uh, 911, call LAPD 311. Let us vet out. Don't put yourself at risk. Give us all the information. What did you see? Where was it at? What time? That's what we're asking for. So, so is that you know, what can't control, like the weather? It has like this that can be controlled by you know, a suspect. What's the reaction? How do you approach this when you're dealing with somebody Potentially well, that's why we need uh, the community to help us. 95% or above of all brush fires are human caused. Many times it's accidental. It could be a power line falls into the brush. It could be somebody creating sparks because they're using a weed whacker to clear brush. That's happened. Unattended uh, pit fire, fire pits. And we have a small percentage where it's malicious and it's in intentional. And that's what we need the help for as well as those other scenarios. If the community sees an unattended fire pit, tell us. I'd rather roll one engine out right away and handle it while it's small before it takes off. I can't elaborate on that at this time. I, I don't have uh, any information about that. There's only the mandatory evacuations in the county, which is the Panga, and we have a warning in the city. If everything goes our way today, uh, that warning will remain a warning. Uh, we're optimistic today. We do anticipate making good progress today. Are you saying you don't know if the suspect is homeless? And if so or not, how does that jeopardize the investigation by, by withholding that information? I'm saying I don't know. Okay. And whether it's uh, pertinent to the investigation, I'll let our investigators figure that out. Just to clarify on the evacuation to make sure I have it straight, there are some mandatory evacuations that are still in place that are in county jurisdiction, not in the city, and although they are in place, we don't see any structures that are immediately in place. Correct. Can you talk about what signs you guys saw on Friday night and Saturday? This is the size of the 
besides what There was uh, information actually from a, uh, I think it was an LAP helicopter pilot saw something from the sky. And we that was the initial uh, start. And then we saw, uh, we had additional information the following day that a, fi a fire at a different location was uh, starting up. So anytime you have multiple points of origin, your first thought, this is not natural. There, w it w there wasn't enough wind for embers under normal conditions, you would consider that, but there was not very much wind. So all those things are part of the investigation. We'll more know in the coming days. Do you still feel optimistic about the progress of the I feel more optimistic if I can get the tankers up, but um, I'm, I'm optimistic anyway. The tankers will increase that optimism. As far as I know, yes. I don't know. I don't have that information. Okay. How, how important is it for you? I, I know in the Malibu fire, this was a staging area for LAFD, and for all the hills back there, this becomes a staging area. How important is it to keep this so that you can use it for staging areas for emergencies? We have staging areas and base locations and hill spots throughout the city of Los Angeles, and based on the location of the fire, we'll, we'll dictate where those uh, staging locations and bases will be set up. We want it in close proximity to the fire. So I can't say they're all important. I just don't know. It depends on where the fire is. I'll tell you the day of the fire, where it happens, which one's the most important. All right. Thank you all. We have over 20,000 signatures. Please help us cross. Check out Venice. Please save Will Rogers. Help us, Mayor Garcetti. Save me, Lord. Mayor Garcetti, please help us. We will have PIOs available in English and Spanish for needed 101s in about five minutes. Thank you.